Repurchase agreements are another important source of funding not only for banks, but also for other market participants. A repurchase agreement, or repo, is an arrangement by which one party sells a security to a counterparty, with a commitment to buy it back at a later date at a specified price. So in effect, the buyer is actually lending funds to the seller with a security as collateral. On the repurchase date, the seller, which is the borrower, is supposed to pay the lender the repurchase price in order to obtain back collateral security. A repo for one day is called an overnight repo, while an agreement covering a longer period is called a term repo. The repurchase price is greater than the selling price and accounts for the interest charged by the buyer. The interest rate implied is called the repo rate, which is the annualized percentage difference between the repurchase and selling prices. Repos are popular because the interest cost of a repo is usually less than the rate on bank loans or other short-term borrowing. Let's look at an example. A firm named borrower enters into a repo agreement to sell a 5% 10-year bond with a par value of a million dollars. The bond has a current market value of $950,000. The bond is to be sold at $920,000 and repurchased 180 days later for $932,000. The holding period yield for the 180-day loan period is 1.3%. The repo rate would be expressed as the equivalent annual rate, which is 2.63%. So, what are the factors that affect the repo rate? Firstly, like most other debt securities, the longer the term, the higher the repo rate. Unlike other debt securities, the credit quality of the borrower is not that important. Instead, the credit quality of the collateral is much more important. The higher the credit quality, the lower the repo rate. Borrowers have the choice of whether to deliver the collateral to the lender or just pledge the collateral without delivery. If the collateral is delivered, the repo rate will be lower. And because there are alternative sources like taking a bank loan, the interest rate charged by these alternative sources is also a factor. If alternative interest rates are high, the repo rate is likely to be high as well. Now, back to our example. Repurchase agreements, like any other form of debt instruments, are not without credit risk to the lender. The counterparty can default, which in this case is if the borrower fails to repurchase the collateral on the repurchase date. The compensation to the lender is that she can take possession of the collateral. The risk, however, is that the price of the collateral may have fallen following the inception of the repurchase agreement, causing the market value of the collateral to be lower than the unpaid repurchase price. This is the reason why you see that there's a gap between the market value of the collateral and the selling price of the collateral. This gap is known as the repo margin or haircut, which in this case is 3.16%. The repo margin provides the lender a margin of safety if the collateral's market value declines. Again, let's examine some of the factors that affect the repo margin. Similar to the repo rate, the repo margin is affected by the length of the repurchase agreement. The longer the term, the higher the repo margin. Also, the quality of the collateral is important. The higher the quality of the collateral, the lower the repo margin. Besides quality, the supply and demand conditions of the collateral also matter. Repo margins are lower if the collateral is in short supply or if there's a high demand for it. This is because some lenders want to own a specific bond as collateral. They compete by offering a lower repo margin. And lastly, the credit quality of the counterparty. The higher the credit worthiness of the counterparty, the lower the repo margin required. So in summary, a repo is an agreement whereby one party borrows cash by selling a collateral security and promises to buy it back at a specified future date at a specified price. Interest paid is implicit in the repurchase price. You may, however, come across this term, reverse repurchase agreement. This essentially is the same agreement, but viewed from the standpoint of the lender. From her standpoint, she lends cash by buying the collateral security. On the repurchase date, she sells it back and earns interest in the process. So in essence, the question of whether a particular transaction is labelled a repurchase agreement or a reverse repurchase agreement depends on one's point of view. 
And that concludes this lesson on short-term fundings for banks and this topic on fixed income markets. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.